What grade would you give the administration for handling the supply chain issue, and do you think it was totally an administration responsibility? Well, look, supply chains are private, but we as an administration have a responsibility and a capability to help, and that's exactly what we've been doing. Uh, in particular, I, I think it was really visionary of the president to be issuing an executive order on this in February uh, and having us convene a task force on this over the summer before most people in the media were, were talking about the issue, seeing how some of these uh, uh, challenges would build up as the economy came back. Demand is through the roof and supply is racing to keep up. That reflects economic growth, but it creates its own challenges, its own problems, like those shipping delays. And I'm so impressed with the creativity that has gone into solving some of those issues, reducing the amount of time that containers sit here at ports, for example, and getting products to people's shelves and to people's homes. Uh, the president personally or the administration is really being blamed a lot by Republicans for inflation. Your response? Well, look, uh, this is largely a consequence of the economy coming back so quickly. We're seeing levels of unemployment that have literally uh, not been this low in my lifetime. And to uh, have that kind of whiplash after uh, what our economy went through last year uh, is obviously going to have a lot of complex effects. But uh, this is precisely why the president is putting forward a bill to lower costs. The problem with inflation is uh, prices are up, right, uh, on things like gas. And, and food. So the president's got a bill on the things we can control, cutting the cost of child care, cutting the cost of insulin, and we don't have a single Republican vote for that. If Republicans are concerned with inflation, we invite them to join us instead of opposing us on legislation to cut the cost of prescription drugs, cut the cost of elder care, bring relief to American families. It sounds like you don't have all the Democratic votes either. Well, we're close. We do need to, uh, you know, finish that negotiation, uh, but we're doing it in the face of unified Republican opposition. Uh, I, I've still wish that some Republicans would come across, but if they aren't willing to, we're still going to get this done because it's so important to the American people. What uh, What is the disappointment level that, that priorities seem to be changing a little bit? And he talked about voting rights over Build Back Better. Well, look, uh, voting rights are fundamental to our democracy. It's the issue that all the other issues depend on. Uh, so uh, I don't envy the, the Congress uh, uh, for the many things, urgent things they have to take up. Our Build Back Better legislation, voting rights, which is so urgent and important heading into next year, but really for for the entire future of this country, not for Democrats and Republicans, but for the integrity of, of our democracy. Meanwhile, you had the debt ceiling issues. There's a lot going on, but Congress and Washington need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time, and that's what we're trying to do as an administration. And just a quick question. Why do you think, I think a lot of people are depressed. They talk a lot about the holidays, COVID's back. Um, and they don't think that the president's doing enough. How do you change that? Uh, how do you change that image? Look, I think as a country, we've been through a lot, and we're seeing a lot of mixed signals. You know, unemployment's never been this low, but prices are up, and, and folks are, are feeling it. Again, that's why we're working so urgently to bring down costs. Uh, what we have to do more than anything else is put the pandemic behind us. That's why vaccinations matter so much. And anybody, any American, is empowered to make a difference by being vaccinated and encouraging loved ones who trust you to do the same.